Just a quick reminder before we get into the lesson to download the hands-on lab exercises that accompany this complete CCNA course. I'll include the link in the description. Also remember to subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you don't miss any of the lessons in the course. Okay, let's get into it. In this lecture, you'll learn about traffic shaping and policing. When people talk about QoS in general, they're probably talking about queuing. But there are other QoS mechanisms available, like shaping and policing, which are also commonly used. Traffic shaping and policing can be used to control traffic rate. They both measure the rate of traffic going through an interface and take an action if the rate is above a configured limit. If you look at a router, it knows the amount of traffic that's going through its interfaces. You can see that if you do a show interface command. So because it knows how much traffic is going through the interfaces, you can configure it to take an action if it goes above a certain rate. Traffic shaping and policing both work in a very similar fashion but the action that they take is different. So it's used for different scenarios that we'll cover as we go through this lecture. Traffic shaping buffers any excess traffic so that the overall traffic rate stays within your desired rate limit. So you can think of traffic shaping as putting the brakes on if the traffic is going too fast. It keeps it within the required limit and it smooths out the traffic flow. Traffic policing, on the other hand, drops or remarks SS traffic to enforce the specified rate limit. So traffic policing is much more aggressive. If the limit goes up, if traffic goes above the limit that you set, usually you're going to just drop that excess traffic rather than buffering it so it just gets slowed down. So you'll see that traffic shaping is usually used at the customer side of a link and policing is used on the other side on the service provider. You can use them for different scenarios as well, but that's most common. And I'll cover that in more detail as we go through this lecture. Classification can be used in your shaping or policing policy to configure different rates for different traffic types. For example, you could allow a different rate for traffic that is marked as DSCP EF than you allow for traffic that is marked as AF31. So that is optional. You can apply the rate to the aggregate of all traffic, or you can have different rates for different traffic types. So let's look at the scenarios where this would be used. It's the easiest way to understand it. First one is we are looking at it from the point of view of the service provider. In the example, the customer has provisioned an MPLS VPN between their headquarters and their branch offices. The physical links from the CE to the PE routers on both sides are 100 megabits per second, fast ethernet. But the customer has only paid for 10 megabits per second in the contract with the service provider. That's what's agreed in their service level agreement. Traffic is going to go at the rate that the physical interface is set at, which is 100 megabits per second in this example. But a way that you can influence the rate is by using policing or shaping. So in the example here, the customer, they've got 100 megabits per second on both ends, but they've only actually paid for 10 megabits per second. So the service provider is not going to be sending traffic all the way across their core at 100 megabits per second for this customer. They're going to limit it to 10 megabits per second when it comes inbound on the PE. So that's what the service provider is going to do. They will configure a policing QoS policy on both PEs on the interface facing the CE router in the inbound direction. So whenever any traffic comes in, if it comes in at a rate higher than 10 megabits per second, the excess traffic is just going to get dropped. So the service provider is going to limit the customer to that 10 megabits per second worth of bandwidth that they've paid for. So you will see this being used very commonly. Another place where you can see policing being used, not at service providers, but within normal enterprises. And common use case here is worm and junk traffic mitigation. 
what a worm is is that's a type of virus obviously you don't want that type of traffic on your network at all definitely not taking up your bandwidth so an enterprise can configure classification and marking to recognize worms and also junk traffic that they don't want on their network like peer-to-peer -peer file sharing applications that bad traffic is known as scavenger traffic and the recommended dscp value to market with is dscp 8 which is cs1 so once you've got the traffic classified and marked you can then configure a policing policy which is going to rate limit down to a tiny amount so it can't take up any bandwidth on your network so this will mean that if users are trying to share files like movies and stuff like that over your one link that's not a business case you don't want them doing it you can police the traffic right down so it doesn't take up any of your bandwidth for worms obviously you want to have antivirus on your users pcs so you don't get a worm in the first place but if you are infected with a worm one of the really bad things that happens is it will start sending traffic out trying to infect other pcs and when it manages to do that they'll do the same thing and it can quickly end up eating all of the bandwidth on your network by using policing for worm mitigation it doesn't stop you getting infected but it stops the worm from taking up all your bandwidth and grinding the network to a halt when you do get hit with one so it means it gives you time you can go and clean all of those pcs better not to get infected in the first place but this is good that if you do get infected it stops it from crashing your network okay back on to that first scenario again where we've got the customer with their HQ and their branch office, and they've got an MPLS VPN between the two sites. And the physical links from the CE to the PE are 100 meg, and the provider is policing at 10 meg inbound on the PE routers. And the customer knows this. So the customer knows that if they send traffic at a rate higher than 10 megabits per second, that excess traffic is going to get dropped. So if they do send at the higher rate, some traffic will get to the other side, some traffic will not. In our scenario, we're using both voice and video, and you know already that voice has strict quality requirements. If a lot of the packets are getting dropped, it's going to be a terrible quality phone call. So the customer knows they have to make sure that they don't have any of those voice packets being dropped. And the way that they do that is by making sure that they don't send at a rate higher than 10 megabits per second. Now, you know already that they can't use the bandwidth statement on the interface to do that. The bandwidth statement affects other software policy, like your routing protocols, but it doesn't actually affect the rate that traffic is sent at. The way that we can affect the rate that traffic is sent at is by configuring a shaping policy outbound on those ce routers so let's have a look and see how we're going to configure that we configure a policy map here i've called it one edge and i say class class default and shape average to 10 megabits per second i didn't need to configure any of our class maps here because the policy map the shaper is being applied to all traffic so class class default makes it take effect on all traffic and I'm shaping it to 10 megabits per second. Then I need to remember to apply it to the interface with my service policy. So interface fast ethernet zero slash zero. I do that on both CE routers on the outside interface facing towards the provider. And I say service policy out one edge. Now all traffic is going to be shaped to 10 megabits per second. It's not going to go above that. So the provider is not going to drop any traffic. But we've got another problem as well now. So let's have a look at that. Let's see what our scenario was. So we've got a 10 megabits per second SLA on the WAN outside interface. The physical speed of the WAN outside interface was 100 megabits per second. So we've put the shaper on there to shape all traffic to 10 megabits per second to guarantee that the service provider won't drop any of our traffic. We've got a 100 megabits per second fast ethernet interface on the inside facing towards Milan as well on both CEs. And we have figured out how much bandwidth we need for our different traffic types. We need one megabits per second for voice, 
three megabits per second for video and six megabits per second for data. So that's why we paid for a 10 meg link from the provider. But data will sometimes burst above six megabits per second, creating congestion. Because we've got that 100 megabits per second interface on the inside, we're shaping to 10 megabits per second on the outside. So if we have traffic coming in at a rate more than 10 megabits per second, we're gonna get congestion there. And let's say that data has burst above six megabits per second. We've now got 12 megabits per second's worth of traffic coming in, but we're trying to squeeze that 12 meg into a 10 meg pipe. It's not going to go. So we've got congestion there. It's going to affect the quality for all of our traffic. And again, we're going to have bad quality voice and video calls if that happens. So we don't just have the shaper to shape traffic to 10 megabits per second. We also need to have an LLQ policy here as well. So let's have a look at the config for that. Same policy that you saw before for LLQ, but there's going to be a twist here. So we've got the class maps to specify the traffic we're interested in. Class map voice, match IP DSCP EF. Class map video, match IP DSCP AF41. And class map signaling, match IP DSCP CS3. Then we've got the policy map to see what we're going to do with it. Policy map, I've called it nested. You'll see why in a second. For class voice, which was the DSCP EF, the voice traffic, priority 1024. So we're guaranteeing it that one megabits per second worth of bandwidth it required, and we're putting it in the priority queue. Class video, priority 3072, it's getting its three megabits per second. Class signaling, bandwidth 128. And then class, class default for everything else, fair queue. Now, you can only apply one policy map, one service policy to the interface. So what we do is this LLQ policy that we've just created to prioritize the voice and the video traffic, we nest that inside the shaper policy. So underneath policy map one edge, we say service policy nested in there. And it's the policy map one edge that is applied at the interface level. So at the interface level, we're shaping all traffic to 10 megabits per second. If we need to try to send more than 10 megabits per second through there though, our voice and our video traffic is going to go straight to the front of the queue. So this guarantees that no traffic is going to get dropped because we don't send more than what we've paid for the service provider. And when we are trying to send more, voice and video goes straight to the front of the queue. So voice and video still gets the service it requires. Okay, that was it. That was everything for QoS. Again, don't worry about memorizing these configurations. You don't need to know the configuration for the exam. I'm just showing you it here so you get a full understanding of how QoS works. Okay, QoS done. See you in the next section. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to get the complete course ad free right now, then you can enroll in my CCNA Gold Bootcamp by clicking the link above my head or in the description. It also includes full study notes, quizzes, and 150 pages of additional troubleshooting labs you can't find anywhere else.